talk about, but it's so important, and that is perceiving the seasons of our life. And uh, many times we do not perceive the seasons that, that are in our life. I want to start off with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. And it says, because of his great love, talking about God, his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy. Aren't you glad God is rich in mercy? Amen. Don't you wish your spouse had a little more mercy? <laughs> like God does? Yeah. God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgression. And it's talking about what God has already done for you. And God has raised us up with Christ Jesus, and he has set us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Then it goes on to say, for we are God's handiwork, we're his masterpiece, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Here's the key. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen. Before you were born, the Bible says in Psalm 139, when you were in your mother's womb, God looked at you. His thoughts towards you were more than the sand grains on every seashore on this planet, more than the stars in the sky. He put thought into you. And he said, I'm going to weave you into my great purpose. You have talents, you have passion, and you have a destiny. We are his handiwork. So here's the deal. I don't want you to say, well, Pastor Steve never told me why I am here on this planet, never helped me find my destiny, because I don't want you to stand before God and say, well, I don't know why, what I was supposed to do. Wouldn't that be crazy to stand before God, and we all will stand before God, and he'll ask, what did you do with what I gave you? What did you do with your life? What did you do with your time? What did you do with your passion? So we're beginning our 21 days of prayer next Sunday on. We're entering a new year, so it's important to know what God has planned for life. I don't know about you, the older I get, I, I look back over my life and I ask myself, have I done what I was supposed to do? Have I completely wasted last year? How many of you feel like we may have wasted a lot of last year? But God has planned specific things for us to do with our lives, so we have to ask our, the, the question, are we in God's plan or are we just trying to live for ourselves? What He's planned out for us have we become been accomplishing them, or do we just ignore God's desires for our lives? So we're starting that new series today. Becoming who God has made us to be. Family, the number one reason why we miss out on God's will and blessing in our lives. The number one reason without a doubt. You guys ready for this? You ready? Because I want you to I want you to ask the question: have I missed out on something that God has wanted me to do? And here's the reason why. When we never enter what God has for our lives, we don't sense the blessing in our lives like we should. We live an ordinary, mundane life. And at the end of our lives, we look back and say, what have I even accomplished? First Chronicles 12, 32, this is what we need to be. We need to, it says, from Issachar, there were men who understood the times and they knew what Israel should do. They understood the times, they understood the seasons, and they knew what they should do. And we need to be like that. So I want to talk about the times and seasons of our life. Have, have you ever said this? Do you have a minute? Do you have a minute? I get so if you know when people never answer your emails, I always say just a quick question. Just that I just need a minute of your time. But you know, when we say do you have a minute, we're implying that a minute's a small thing. But a minute can be a very big thing if you're buying an ad on the Super Bowl. This year, do you know how much a minute costs for a Super Bowl ad? $13 million for a minute. $13 million. NBC determined, who has exclusive broadcasting rights for the Super Bowl, determined that a minute for that Super Bowl is worth $13 million. Do you know that proves this is the answer to number one? Not every minute is the same. There are minutes in our life that are more valuable than others. How many of you know that's true? Yeah. There are some good minutes that are a little more valuable. So, matter of fact, if you look out over your life, you will see maybe a handful of decisions, just a handful of decisions that you made that either made or broke your life. Married the right person, married the wrong person. Whoops, had an accident. Whoops, didn't have an accident. You know, I'm telling you, minutes are not the same. And, and minutes aren't free. You've only got a limited supply. When we're young, we think we have an infinite supply, but eventually you run out of minutes. So let me put it like this. Your time on this planet is God's gift to you. Yeah. What you do with it is your gift to Him. That's a fill in the blank. 
Your time is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift to Him. Time's always moving. It's not, how many of you know time is not waiting on you? The day turned over today, whether we wanted it or not. How many of you wish you could slow down days when you're on vacation and kind of speed them up when you're working? My heart, you can't. It will not pause, it will not slow. Time keeps going on. You, and you can't get back past minutes. Once they're gone, they're gone. So we have a thief, an enemy in our life, and he has set in motion a plot that really destroys many people's lives and the vision for their life. And it's a plot that deals with your time and with your life. Have you ever talked to an older person at the end of their life and they, they mention they don't know what happened with their life? Yes. Okay. I've talked to a lot of people who are incredibly disappointed at the end of their life. What they're saying is that they've had a revelation of time and they know they don't have a lot of time left. Have you ever talked to people that said this, well, I, I've wasted my life. What they're saying is they've got a revelation of time and they wish that they had lived their priorities a little differently. As your pastor, I don't want you to ever have to live with regret, that kind of regret. And we focus a lot here to put in context to your life, to your actions, to your time, to your money, so that we'll not end our life with regret. But I would say like this, there is a tremendous delusion in our culture, a tremendous delusion in our culture that will that we'll always have time, that will always have tomorrow. Because for the culture, time always moves on. But it's a delusion. That's a fill in the blank. 2 Timothy 3 says it like this. Now I want you to see as we read this, the Apostle Paul tells that the Spirit of God spoke to him about the last times, and he described the people that lives in the last times. See if this may be describing our culture. Yep. But mark this. There will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying his power, have nothing to do with such people. Can anybody see our culture here? Oh, I can see it over and over again. So another issue in our culture is that our culture pushes us to live for the moment. So fill in the blank. To live for the moment. To live in the present. See, we don't want to save up to buy things. No, 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 no. We want it all now. We want all the stuff our parents had at the very beginning of our life, even if we have to go up to our eyeballs in debt. Am I right? See, the problem is that life doesn't work that way. Life is made up of seasons and it's made up of moments. Do you know why we're unaware of the seasons in our life? Let me, let me tell you why. And this is the great tragedy. Seasons are so important in our life because there are seasons to do things, seasons not to do things. But we have lost all sense of seasons and movement in our life, and I'll give you, I'll give you a reason why. Okay, you ready for this? According to a recent Common Sense Media report, teenagers spend an astounding nine hours a day was streaming video, listening to music, and playing games. Nine hours a day. Astounding. The average adult spends 59 hours a week on the internet, according to a study done in April 2021 by the Stoughton.com. If you're assuming that every person has a 40-hour work week, we can say that the average time people spend on the internet a year and convert it into an eight-hour work day would be equal to 383 days of work in one year. That's one that we spend on our job or any other things. The issue is the Bible calls the time we're living in terrible times because people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure. Terrible times. What makes it terrible? People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure. Here's the danger. Before you turn me off, here's what you got to get this off. The danger of the times we live in is when you live for pleasure, when you live for yourself, guess what? You have no priorities, no purpose, and you lose all sense of urgency or any perception of the seasons and times of your life. It is a plot of the enemy to deceive us in the thinking that time, we always have time for another Netflix, another this, another that, 
another hour on the internet, and we lose all sense of urgency and priority and purpose for our life. So let me show you how important the seasons and times of our life is. Now, if I were to tell you that during this Christmas season, the last week, I went to my backyard, I found it up, and I planted corn. How many of you feel like I would reap corn at some time from that? I would not. Do you know why I would not? Don't try it. Because I, I would be, I, because I would have sowed the corn in the wrong season. When we first got here, we came in July and our front yard was bent. What did I do? I bought a ton of saw and I put it down. Do you know how long that saw lasted? I don't know. Because saw is not meant to be planted in July when the sun is its hottest. No, no, you got to plant, am I right? you got to plant your flowers, you got to plant your grass in spring when it's cooler, when it rains all the time, so that it gives time for it to get some roots down there. Because if you're as stupid as I was, and you planted saw in the middle of summer, you're going to have a dirty, dead, brown lawn. Am I right? Yeah. And that's why, I, why? Because I did not sow in the right season. <coughs> am I right? That's right. If we're going to be successful in Virginia, we have to sow... We have to plant in the spring. So operating the seasons of life properly with God's direction will always produce a harvest. That's a fill in the blank. I won't say that again. Operating in the seasons of life properly with God's direction will always give you a harvest. Proverbs 20, verse 4 says this. Sluggers, how many of you know what a slugger means? We don't use that word anymore. It's not a snail. Slugger is another word for lazy. Lazy people. But... In, in, in fact, in Proverbs, there are three kinds of people. There's wise people, there are foolish people, and then there are the sluggers. And so Proverbs talks about three kinds of people. But sluggers, they do not plow in season. They might even plow, but they were like me, plowing the wrong season. So at harvest time, they look, but they find nothing. So many people, they want to find a harvest in their life. But they didn't sow in season because they had no perception of the seasons of their life. Do you realize that there are right times to do everything in your life? And if you're connected to the Spirit of God, which is why prayer, we start off every year with prayer, because there are some things you need to sow for this year. And then there are other things you cannot sow this year because it will not produce a harvest. But you'll never know that unless you're not listening to the Spirit of God in your life. See, our culture has trained us that life just moves on and people waste seasons and time. Proverbs 6, verse 6 says this, Go to the end, you slugger. I guess they love that word. Go to the end, you lazy person. Consider its ways and be wise. That ant is so small. Am I right? And yet it is wise. It has no commander, has no receiver, no ruler. Yet it stores its provision in summer. It gathers its food and harvest. Wow. Even an ant is wise enough to discern and perceive the seasons. Because it perceives the seasons in life, it always has provision. Let me give you a great example. If you had spent $1,000 in 2010 in Bitcoin, you'd have 270, or excuse me, 287 million today. Just $1,000 in 2010. And I'm sure most of us had that money in 2010, but we didn't perceive the season. There are so many things in our life that we don't perceive because we are so busy. Matthew 16, Jesus said to the people, this is what he said to the smartest people in his culture. He said, when the evening comes, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. And in the morning tomorrow will be stormy for the sky is red and overcast. And then he says, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky? But you cannot interpret the signs or the seasons of the times. See, the wisest men in Jesus' time did not understand the season they were in. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But about that day and about that hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage. Up until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them away. See, the people in Noah's time had no perception 
of the season they were in or else they would have been on that boat. And let me say this. All the enemy has to do in your life to steal your destiny is to give you a lack of understanding and deceive you about a perception of the time and the season that you're in. Because Satan will always whisper to you, you always have tomorrow. Not for, not for everything. There will not be a tomorrow for just everything. See, I talk to people all the time that want to be successful. Wouldn't it be a surprise? I have never talked to someone that wakes up and says, I want to be a total failure with my life. <laughs> no, everybody wants to be successful. So then you ask them the next question. So what are you doing to be successful? Well, Pastor, I have no time. No, you only have 3,068 hours a year that you spend on the internet. In that time, you could have gotten a whole nother career. Hello? I brag about us because I love the internet, but I'm telling you, many times we spend so much time inundated in our in media that we're like ostriches with our heads in the sand and we are oblivious to the seasons of our life. And we miss it. You know, one of my greatest regrets about my kids when they were younger, I spent a lot of time playing with my kids, but I would have milked it more knowing that when they hit puberty, they're going to hate me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I was their hero. They worshipped me until they hit about 13 or 14. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Had I known the seasons, I would have built it a lot more. That's all I can say. That first year of marriage, am I right? When everything you do is just amazing, I should have built it a lot more, babe. That's all I can say. But I'm just saying there are seasons in our lives that we never get back. And guys, we've all heard the expression... I'm just wasting time. Maybe we should not waste time anymore. See, God has put us all here with a purpose, but without a perception of time, there is no urgency. I'm going to say that again. Without a perception of time, there is no urgency, and we just sleep through life. Is that you today? Do you have no clear direction for the day? Because people tell me they're tired all the time. Well, they're tired because you have no purpose and focus and clear direction for your life, I am going to do my best for the next three weeks to hammer into you your destiny, your purpose, your giftings, your talents. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we, we meet a widow, and she had a very bad year. Her husband died, and her husband died in debt. And in those days when you had debt, guess how they got the money back when your husband died? They took your kids. And they sold him as slaves to pay off his debt. So she goes to the prophet Elisha and asks him what to do. You probably know the story. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for some empty jars. Because he asked her what she had, she had a little bit of oil. She said, well, go call your neighbors and ask for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few, then go inside and shut the door behind you and your son. Pour oil into all the jars, jars and as each is still put to one, put it to one side. So she got a lot of good pots, began filling them, 1 Kings 4, 6. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. He said, there's not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. You know, I'm guessing she had a lot of pots, but I'm going to guess she had less than 100 pots. But let me ask you this question. If she had 1,000 pots there that day, how many pots would have been filled? A thousand. If she had had 10,000 pots there, how many would have been filled? 10,000, there was no skin on God's back there. Do you know what I'm saying? A miracle is a miracle. He can fill a pot just as he can fill a hundred pots. But she missed her perception of the moment. She was under pressure to get out of debt, so she missed her perception of the reality of the opportunity before her. If I was her, I would have sent my, my children to all the surrounding towns. I would have had so many pots that you could only see pots as far as the eye could see. Hello? She missed her season because she was under pressure. She didn't get, see, this is my fear. That because of our pressure of life, the pressure of finances, the pressure of family, the pressure of kids, the pressure of work, that we miss the seasons of life. And when we miss them, we miss them. Is that you today? That's why we start off the year with 21 days of prayer. That's why I'm asking you to make a difference this year in your life. Because we're, we're gonna, I'm going to do everything that I, I can to get you on the track that God has created you for. 
But when we make decisions under pressure, we prioritize by pressure. We, and, and our perception is of the moments and seasons kind of is messed up. We have to be able to perceive the seasons to capture the harvest in our lives. And that's one of the blessings of the 21 days of prayer. Start this year to hear from the Lord about the seasons in our life. Do you know if the widow woman had thought clear about it, she'd have gotten a lot more thoughts, am I right? You know, it's interesting that when we went to Russia, uh, the Soviet Union in 1990, when my child was born, God told us prophetically, He told me that we were going to have a quick door. And I thought, God, how is it possible that you thought that it's going to be a quick door? What does that mean? What I didn't realize is that these people had had three generations, 70 years of lies and atheism, and they were sick. They were sick of everything their government was giving them, and there was a moment in time where everywhere you went, people would receive Christ if you gave them the opportunity. How do I know this? Everywhere we went, we saw 99% of the people come forward to receive Christ. We went to a hospital, a hospital. They closed down the hospital for us. I spoke to 400 nurses and doctors. When I gave the altar call to receive Christ, everybody but two people stood up to receive Jesus. It wasn't me. It was a divine season. And if I could have ran city to city to city, I would have ran faster, ran harder, because it only took a year or two for that season in their life to close and that hunger for God to, to dissipate. That's why it's so important to hear God for the season, because your family has a season. Your children have a season when their hearts are open to God. There's a season when their hearts are closed to God. There's seasons in our life. There's seasons to do things. There's seasons to stop doing things. And I'm telling you, we are in a season that we need to hear. Am I right? Yeah. We, need to, we need to hear God so that we don't just tread on a treadmill to be here doing nothing. Am I right? When you have no clear path and no clear urgency to fulfill, then every distraction that comes along becomes one that you fall, fall to. And that's what we are right now. John chapter 4, verse 31, Jesus is at the well in Samaria. He talks to this woman. And after he has talked to her, she goes into town to tell everybody that she's met the Son of God. But meanwhile, his disciples come back with some food and said, Rabbi, I eat something. He says, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. His disciples said to each other, could someone have brought him food? Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. See, there is something about, say, I have to say it like this, when you do what God has asked you to do with your life, there is a satisfaction that money and nothing else can bring. Yeah. Hello? There is no pleasure that will bring satisfaction like doing what God has asked you to do. He said, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it's still four months until the harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They're ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and a harvest of crop for eternal life so that the sower and the reaper may be glad together. <coughs> I want you to get something here. Jesus had purpose and a sense of destiny. He had a sense of urgency to all that he did in life. So his testimony to the woman at the well, it changed the course of her life because even though it was, uh, the, it was, uh, it was a medio dia, it was, a, it was a noon, it was hot, he was tired, and yet he perceived that there was a season in that woman's life. You know, I know that that's why Paul told him to be, be in season and not in season. Do you know many times God talks to us to talk to people to move on pe in people's lives when we're tired? Yes. That's called being out of season. Well, Lord, I'm out of season. Don't you know this is my day off? Why in the world would I tell anybody about Jesus on my day off? <laughs> because this might be the only season that person had. In the hottest sun, when he was tired from walking, Jesus perceived that a woman coming to the well, it was a season of harvest in her life. And he was telling the disciples, listen, you think there's still more four months to the harvest? He harvested the whole city with that one moment because he didn't miss the season of his life. I remember a story by Smith Wigglesworth. If you don't know who Smith Wigglesworth was, he was a great man of God, lived in the late 1800s, early 1900s. 
He listened to God. He was the only person that, that I know of, uh, and he's the, probably the first person who had revival on every continent on the world, in the world, of an amazing man of God. Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia, you name it. He'd been, he'd been to all, in the United States. But he, he, what was characteristic of his life is that when God would speak to him, he would do what God said. One day he was walking, he was from England, he was walking down the street in London, and there were dirty roads. And, and as he got to a street corner, the Lord said, stop. So he stopped. Think about that. First of all, he heard God correctly, and he stopped. And he waited there. An hour passed. Two hours passed. Three hours passed. Finally, four hours had gone by, and a guy is driving this team of horses, and that was before cars and things. Team of horses, this guy, this old, burly-looking guy, was driving this team of horses furiously. And the Lord said, he's the one. He jumps on the guy's cart, the guy looks back at him, and starts cursing him out, and says, what do you got on that cart? Smith Wilsworth said, I'm not moving until you, you know the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? The most amazing thing happened. This guy comes to Christ. And then the next day, Smith Wilsworth wakes up, and he goes to visit him. Guess what? He passed in the night. See, God cares about the seasons of our life. And do you know why we're unaware of the seasons of our life? Because we're on our phones. Because we don't perceive urgency because we're not, that we're not a sin to be on the phone. But it is a sin to only be on the phone and not be listening to the Lord too. Yeah. Yeah. We need to hear the Lord say that. Ephesians 5, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, now live as children of the light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Notice what God is warning us. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, <clears throat> making the most of every opportunity. Or the King James says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Notice, be very careful how you live your life. Make the most of every opportunity. Redeem the time. He's talking to our generation. And notice what he tells us. We must understand the will of the Lord. If we don't understand the will of the Lord, we will miss the seasons of our life. And the best parts of our life will be lost to us. So here's the one thing, we always have two things, one thing to do, one thing to know. The one thing you need to do is to understand His purpose for your life. Understand His purpose for your life. You cannot make the most of every opportunity or redeem the time if you do not understand the Lord's purpose or will for you. Ephesians 2.10, we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the answer to a fulfilling life is to find out why you're here on this earth. And make a difference with your life. Uh, and, and let me just say a couple more thoughts. We, we live in a culture that steals our life. It's stealing our life. I'm going to say it again. We live in a culture that is stealing our life. Because time is our life. We'll say that again. Time is our life. And if we give it a culture's agenda of living for pleasure, we'll never be satisfied in life. Here's the issue with people that live for video games or live for pleasure. They're never satisfied. Satisfaction does not take place by living for pleasure. Pleasure is always a byproduct of living in your purpose, your calling. It really is. Most Americans work in a job they hate. <clears throat> Am I right? You work in a job you hate. You know, it, it's better to find what you love, and then you'll never have to work a day in your life. I've heard that said many times. It's amazing what we'll put up for work in life. But because we don't move with purpose, we don't have a, a clear sense of direction, we don't know what God has called us to do. See, think about this. When people wake up and say, I wish I'd done something different with my life, all you have to do is turn off the internet and television phones and use those 3,000 plus hours a year. Learn to do something different. You get into another career, get a different skill set. Here's what happens. Most of us want the fruit of a different life without having to do the work for us. I don't know any entrepreneur, I don't know any successful business owner that sleeps in and spends <coughs> hours watching television. I don't know one. 
Am I right? There's always a season to sow, and there's a season to reap. You will not reap if you do not sow. Amen. We all want to reap. Most of us are unwilling to do the hard work and sowing to get the harvest. Ecclesiastes 3, 1, for everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. Here's the, the issue. When I don't understand the seasons of my life, I blame it on the seasons. Or I blame it on God. God, why did you do this? I planted corn in December and I'm not getting anything from it. Why is that happening? We pass through seasons that we work in a job we don't necessarily like. Now, I do believe that God starts us in places we don't like because he stretches us. He trains us with new skills and then he moves us to a place or we move ourselves to the place that we were supposed to be. Am I right? So here's the one thing to know today. We must both know the will of the Lord for our life and his will for the season we're in. And we're only going to get that from him. We're only going to get that from prayer. You may have a certain call to a business or an occupation. So many people, they get into the business before they're ready and they fall flat on their face because they didn't have the season of preparation first. You know, Joseph became the prime minister of Egypt, but you know he had 20 years of preparation for that. 20 years of preparation. There's always a season to prepare, there's always a season to grow, and there's always a season to succeed. Your question that you must ask the Lord is, what season am I in? It's important that we walk in step with the Spirit of the Lord. Romans 8, 14, those who are led by the Spirit, those are the children of God. So our job is to pray and ask what the will of the Lord is. Amen. 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 And I just want to say one last thought. As we get older, our focus should not be on a better retirement, but it should be on fulfilling the purpose that God has placed in us in our life. Yeah. So what is God's purpose for you? Why are you here? What are you reaching for? Any priority needs prioritization. Do you have a list of the things that you have in your heart to accomplish? Do you know what I realized? Our, our culture no longer has a list of things that we want to accomplish in life. We have a bucket list of pleasures that we want to do before we die. That, that tells you how much that our culture has changed, changed us. There's a finiteness to our lives, and we must be on point and focused to get it done. I love what Paul said in 2 Timothy 4. The time of my departure has come. I have the good faith. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. Can you say that? That you have finished the course God has set before you? Would you bow your head right now, Father, right now, I pray. For every person listening to me. For every person that came here today, and some of them are saying, Lord, I don't even know why I'm here. And yet, Lord, I'm asking that the words that I spoke today would burn in their hearts. That we would not be the generation that misses our opportunities and our seasons because we were so busy on other things. Spirit of God, I ask that you fall upon your people. Speak to us over the next three weeks as we seek your face, that you would show us where we should be, what we should do, and the season that we're in right now. Amen. Then we head down and never at close. There's some people here here today who say, Pastor, I'm far from God. In fact, I dare say that you're here and you have a great emptiness in your life because God created you that way. There is an emptiness that only He can fill. In fact, the Bible says He's knocking on the door of your life. God will not intervene in your life unless you invite Him. It's just that simple. How do we invite Him? We believe in our heart. We speak with our mouth. The Bible says that we are saved. Something supernatural. We start off in the natural by speaking and praying. But God supernaturally touches us and we're born again. The Bible says he actually gives us that down demon of heaven inside us. Right now, that's my goal for you. That's the way we start off with God's best in our life. By returning to the Lord. Some of you have been to the Lord, but you've been far from him. It's time to return back to God. It's time to put him first in your life. How do we do it? We believe in our heart. We speak with our mouth. I'm going to help you right now. Let's all pray this prayer together. Dear God. I open my life to you. Everyone, let's pray this. God, I open my life to you. Come inside me. Be Lord of my life. I believe that you're the Son of God, Jesus. Believe that you died for me. Help me now to live for you. Amen. Spirit of God, fall on every person here. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Can you give God a hand clap today? Can you want to thank you? All right. I want to thank the people watching on Facebook.
thank the brave people that came today. I want to thank Kai and Jennifer for coming and dedicating their day and their family with them. God bless you. Give me prayer. We're going to be right here praying for you. But I want to tell you to come the next three weeks. We're going to be talking about your destiny, your purpose, your gift. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday.